Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Curious Cargo. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game while it's being played, and I will be showing one full game today. Now, I do want to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because Curious Cargo won the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of this channel. You can learn more about that by visiting patreon.com slash Games. and if you enjoy watching videos just like this one, then I hope that you would consider directly supporting the campaign. Now, the last thing I'd like to ask is that if you enjoy this video, that you click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I will also put corrections below this video in a pinned comment. The final thing I'd like to say before I start is the fact that I'm using these colored cubes today to signify the player colors, but these do not actually come with the game. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of this two-player only game. As you can see, each player has a factory board in front of them, as well as a shipping and receiving board. And as we play through this game, we are going to be drawing tiles out of this bag, which will allow us to establish various connections with these blue and red pipes. We are going to be trying to leave these machines and go to the left where they can be picked up by these trucks. And that is actually going to happen if you make a contiguous line of a specific color from one of these gray spots onto a truck. You will then take the associated token and put it onto that truck. Now these trucks are going to move away from our warehouse and go into our opponent's area where they could potentially lay down pipes of their own to go from the truck and that associated resource all the way back to one of their machines, in which case they could place that onto their own player board and they would have just received victory points for that and we also will potentially get victory points for these that we get rid of. So that means this is a cycle-based game where we are going to be loading up onto trucks and sending them over to our opponent while they are loading up trucks and sending those over to us. So we are going to want to send pipes to the left to ship out goods as well as to the right to receive goods because once the game is over, the player with the most victory points will be the winner and you get victory points for shipping and receiving. Now it's possible that um, someone will actually just win without even scoring victory points based off of acquiring stars and I'll talk about the details of how those specifically work as we are playing through the game. In addition to that, I'll talk about the details of placing these tiles out, as well as moving trucks and using these various tokens as we are playing through the game. But I think at this point, it's probably a good idea to just jump right into it and start playing. Now, we are going to be the black player, as you can see, and we can now begin the game's first round. And within each round, there are two phases. The first is called the construction phase, and the second is called the trucking phase. Now, technically, the construction phase happens in player order, but more often than not, you can play it simultaneously between the players to keep the game moving quickly. Now, the player order is established by this track over here. The token that is farthest down the track is going to be the player who is the first player, and if the tokens are on the same spot, then the one on top will be the first player. Since our token is on top of the white one, that means we are technically the first player, but again, this construction phase usually happens simultaneously between the players. Now, the way this works is each player can take up to three construction actions, and with each construction action, we can either draw a random tile out of this bag, or we could place a tile that we already have somewhere down onto our factory floor. Now, obviously, we don't have any tiles at the moment, and we also should have this token on our board, and let's go ahead and take our first out of three actions by drawing one tile from the bag. So, let's go ahead and draw a random tile, and the first thing that I'd like to point out is that each of these tiles are double-sided. As you can see, there is a light background side and a black background side, and the dark background one is for the advanced version of the game. With the standard version, you have red and blue pipes, and in the advanced version, you have red, blue, as well as purple pipes, so three different things that you can ship total. Now, I am not going to be playing with the advanced version today, so we are always going to be dealing with the light side of these tiles. And with that, we've used one out of our three construction actions. Now remember, each action can either draw a tile or place a tile down, and we have two more to use. Now I think let's go ahead and draw another tile for our second action. So let's see what we get. And, oh, all right, this is going to work out pretty well for us. Now we have one construction action left, and instead of drawing a tile, let's use this action to place one of these tiles down into our factory. The way this works is we simply place a tile that we currently have in our hand or the face-up tile in our storage area down onto our factory floor. 
Now, I'll talk about the details of this storage in a little bit. For now, we have these two tiles in our hand and we can place one of them down. Now, when we place these down, we do have to make sure that they are staying within the factory floor area. You are not allowed to play it so that it overlaps with an edge or the art like this. You also cannot overlap any of these machine ports, but you are allowed to go next to them. In fact, the big goal that we are working towards is trying to have these machine ports be connected to the shipping side on the left, as well as the receiving side on the right. Now, when we place these tiles down, they can go anywhere in our area. They don't have to be adjacent to anything else in particular. And it's also worth noting that if you want to place a tile down so that it is uneven like this, that is illegal, but each player does start the game with five of these scaffolding tokens. Now, you can use these by slipping them underneath a tile that you placed so that they are on the same level, and you simply get five of those throughout the game, and you never bring them back into your area. Now, obviously, we don't need to use this just yet, but that is a good thing to keep in mind for future placements. Well, in this case, I think let's use this tile and place it like that. Now, as you can see, by placing it there, we have covered up this gear symbol, and that is associated with the construction tokens. Whenever we cover up one of these symbols, we can take a construction token from the supply and then keep this in front of us, and we can spend up to one of these during each of our construction phases. Well, at this point, we've used all three of our construction actions, but I think before we move on, let's actually use this construction token. Now, when you spend these, you can either gain two more construction actions in that specific construction phase, or if you have one of these splitter bonus tiles, you can spend this construction tile to place this down. And as you can see, that simply splits one line into up to three more lines, so you can be even more efficient. Now, we don't have any of these yet, and I'll talk about how we gain these later on. Instead, I think let's spend this to gain two more construction actions right now. Now, as I mentioned before, you can only spend one of these per construction phase. So even if we cover up more of these within this specific construction phase, we cannot spend any more on this turn. So we have two more actions to go with. And with the first of these two bonus construction actions, let's draw a tile. And the one that we're going to get is this one. All right, we can add that into our hand, and we have one more action left. Honestly, I think let's just draw another tile, so that means this will be the one that we get, and now we've used all of our construction actions. Now, at this point, we have three of these tiles in our hand, and we now have to take all of the tiles in our hand and put them into our storage. We are not allowed to keep tiles in our hand when we move beyond a construction phase. Now, the way this works is we are going to stack these into our storage areas, and we have two storage areas total. Now, the order in which we put these down is important, because remember, when you spend a construction action to place a tile down, you can either place any tile in your hand or a top tile from this area. Now, I think we are probably going to want to place both of these tiles in the next turn of the game. And specifically, I think we're going to want to place this one before that one, although the order doesn't super matter. So I think we will stack these on top of each other so that on our next turn, we can place this one and then that one will be available and we can then place that one after. Now, this one we don't really have a plan for just yet. So let's put that into the other storage spot. And we have now successfully completed our construction phase. Now, as I mentioned before, the construction phase technically happens in player order, but it can usually happen simultaneously. And in this tutorial, I am going to be showing it as simultaneous, just showing you what the white player did once they are done constructing. Uh, for this phase, they have just drawn three tiles, though, and then they've decided to place those into their storage like this. With the construction phase over, we can now move into the second phase of the round, which is the trucking phase. Now, at the start of the trucking phase, if anyone has any goods to ship or receive, that happens at this moment, but no one is in that position, and I'll talk about how that works later on in the tutorial. Now, at this point, we are going to go in player order, which again is us. We will then perform our trucking phase, and then our opponent will perform theirs. The way the trucking phase works is we are going to select one out of three different trucking phase options. The first is we can play trucking cards from our hand, and as you'll see, these cards show one action point or two action points. Now, when we decide to play these cards, we will be able to use up to two action points for playing these cards out. That means we could play this card by itself to use both action points, or we could place both of these to use up to two, but again, you could use up to, so I could play just one of these if I wanted to. Now, the second overall option for our trucking phase is we could discard one of our trucking cards into a discard pile to then gain the associated number of random tiles out of this bag, which we would then have to immediately put into our storage. 
So we could discard this one here to gain three. That one would get us three, while this one would just get us one random tile out of the bag. The third and final trucking phase option involves getting rid of these tiles in order to gain more truck carts. Specifically, this means we could get rid of the top two tiles from these stacks, or we could get rid of two tiles from one of these stacks from the top and going down in order to draw a new truck card and place that into our hand. Once again, we have to select one of these three options, which are playing these cards to put trucks down, playing these cards to get random tiles, or discard tiles to gain more truck cards. Now, I think what we want to do is actually play this card to gain this truck. This does say 2 AP, which means it's going to use both of our action points for this option. And then we are going to place this specific size 6 truck down into the shipping area of our factory. Now, I say specific because this card shows art that matches up with exactly one of these trucks. There is one card in this deck for each of these trucks that we see out here. I suppose the only exception to that is these small size 2 trucks, which are all the same. Every one of these other trucks are slightly different. Now this truck matches up with that one, so that means we can take this from the supply, and then we always add these trucks onto the shipping side of one of the two factories. Now what that means is we could actually place this onto the shipping side of our opponent, and it might not be obvious why we'd want to do that right now, but you'll see why that might happen later on in the tutorial. For now, I do think we should put this into our own shipping area, and we don't simply place this down. Instead, this truck drives into the loading dock. Now that's important because there might be other trucks over here already. For example, if this truck was already here in our loading dock and we brought this one in, when it drives in, it's going to push the next truck up and you're going to keep going until this truck has fully arrived in the dock. Now, if any of the pushed trucks have even one segment that goes beyond your factory, then that truck is going to leave your factory entirely and then move into the receiving area of your opponent's board. Obviously, when that truck enters this area, it could bump other trucks out, and if any of those trucks go beyond this line, they are simply removed from the game, along with any resources that might be on top of them. So, this is why you might want to send a truck over to your opponent's area, because if they have a truck with resources that you want, you could place this over here so that that truck will leave and come into your own receiving area, where you could then receive that resource. Now, I'll talk about the details of receiving resources later. Obviously, this truck is not currently in play, and when we drive this truck into our shipping side, it simply goes right along there and then stops. Now, at this moment, if there was a full path of one color pipe from a machine port onto an empty location on this truck, we would then ship that good, taking it from our board, and we place it down onto that truck. But obviously, we do not have a full path yet. And I know I'm saying this a lot, but I'll describe the details of placing those onto the trucks later on in the tutorial, and hopefully that will happen soon. Well, we've spent our two action points playing a truck down onto the board, and that means our trucking phase is over. So going in turn order to the white player, they can now take their own trucking phase action. After considering the options, they are going to discard this card, not to place a truck, but to gain three random tiles out of the bag. Now, as I said before, players are not allowed to keep tiles in their hand outside of the construction phase, so the white player must immediately place these into their tile storage. After considering their options, they're going to place this one here, and then they are going to place these other two like that. Since we've now both completed our trucking phases, that means this phase is over and the round has come to an end. Now this is the time where we check to see if the game is over and there are a couple of end game triggers, but I'll describe the details of those later once we've seen a little bit more happen out here, specifically with our resources being shipped and potentially received. So let's move into the next round because the game is certainly not over and we will now have another construction phase which we will perform simultaneously even though technically we are going to perform this before our opponent. As I explained in the previous round, during the construction phase we have up to three construction actions and I think we are going to use all three of those actions to place tiles down instead of to draw more tiles because the tiles that we have are actually pretty good for us. The first tile I want to place is this one and let's place it like that. The reason for that is because we have left this machine port and we now have a red pipe going to there and at this point we could place this tile onto that spot and as you can see we have now completed a red path from a machine port over to the shipping side of our board. 
Now this is pointing towards one of our trucks, and that means we are going to load up a red good onto that truck, but that won't happen until the start of the trucking phase, so we'll see that happen soon. Now at this point, we do have one more construction action available to us, and I think let's place this tile down like that. Now, as you can see, we do have a red pipe going into a blue pipe, and that is fine. Obviously, that is not a contiguous pipe, but it's not an illegal placement. Now, this does mean out of that machine port, we have a blue line going to this spot, and I'm hoping to, later on, get more tiles that might let us veer over here onto the shipping side to then ship some blue products as well. Well, that's used all three of our construction actions, and we don't have any construction tokens to spend to gain more, so our construction phase is done. Although before we move on, we do need to glance back over here at the turn order track. Now technically, as soon as we placed this tile down and we made one contiguous path, we then have to come to this track because this shows us the maximum number of contiguous paths we have from the machine ports to either the shipping or receiving sides of our board at any point in the game. Now, by doing this, we went from a maximum of 0 to 1, so that means we can move our token to the 1 spot just like this. Now, in the future, if we break this by placing another tile in such a way like that, so that we do not have that connection, this token does not go back. Again, it shows us the maximum that we have had throughout the game, at this point, the maximum being 1. When we look further down the path, you'll notice there are benefits associated with having a maximum of 3 or more of these connections. The first player to get to three connections will gain one of these construction tokens, and the second player to do this will actually gain two, so there is a little bit of a catch-up mechanism for the lagging player in that respect. Then after that, any player who gets to a max of four or five connections will gain an extra trucking card. At the sixth connection spot, the first player will once again gain one construction token, and the second player will gain two, and both players will gain one trucking card when they get there. In fact, the rest of these spots will give a trucking card, so this is another reason to make lots of these connections, and once the game is over, if we are counting up victory points, you will gain one, two, or four victory points for having a max of seven, eight, or nine. If you make it up to the 10th spot, then that means you are going to gain a star, and I'll talk about the details of these victory points and the stars later on in the tutorial. The final thing I'd like to say about this track for now is that if you ever move onto a spot that already has one of these forklifts, you go on top. So that means since we made one active connection now, if our opponent on their construction phase makes an active connection, they will actually be the starting player going into the trucking phase of this round. Now we haven't seen that actually happen yet, we'll just have to see how they do. Speaking of the white player, we can now see what they did for their construction action. Since technically they went after us, again, if they made any connections, they will jump on top of us, since technically they went after we did. Over here, it looks like they placed five of these tiles, because they covered up a construction token, and they then used that to gain two extra actions, and all of their actions involved placing these tiles out. Now, they did create one active connection with a rather long red line going to that four spot, so that means they can adjust their maximum active connection track as well. So, their forklift will go onto the one spot, and now that we've finished the construction phase, we can move on to trucking, and the white player gets to do this first. Now, technically, before white even takes their turn, we do have to make sure that all shipped and received goods are going to happen based off of the active connections and trucks that are out here. The white player currently does not have any trucks, but we do, and at this moment, we are going to ship a red good. The reason for that is because we have an active red connection that is leading up to an empty spot on one of our trucks. Now what we do is we take the leftmost good that matches that color, so that is red, and that is going to follow the path and go onto that spot in the truck. Now there are some restrictions when it comes to the trucks. These goods must go into empty spots. Locations like this are blocked off permanently, and the other restriction is you can never have two of the same color good directly adjacent. Now this truck does not have that as an option because we have these blocked spots here, so you are allowed to have red like that since there is an empty location there, but if, for example, this was not blocked, then we would never be able to place a red directly adjacent to another red good. Now shipping goods is very important because the only way you are even eligible to win the game is if you have shipped at least two red and two blue goods once the game is over. You can see this line right over there shows that. So once again, if the game is over and there are any goods in this area over there, you don't count anything up. You are just not allowed to win. And if that's the case for both players, then the game ends in a draw with both of you effectively losing. 
Now, shipping is also important for other reasons. In particular, you can gain victory points for the shipped goods, and you can gain various bonuses once you have shipped entire columns. For example, if we ship this blue, we will have cleared that column, and we would gain the bonus underneath. That would get us one of these trucking tokens, which I haven't discussed just yet. They are certainly good to have around, though. Now, this is not the case at the moment. Obviously, this blue is there. And now that we've finished all of our active connections to our trucks, the white player can take their turn. Of course, they would also simultaneously do all of the shipping and potential receiving. Uh, another way this receiving works is if you have active connections from a truck that has any goods on it back to any of these machine ports, you would take those goods and place them onto the receiving side. So, for example, if this was over here, and we had an active set of red pipes from this position back to any one of these machine ports, this would be delivered onto our board. We would immediately gain a benefit if there is one underneath that. This will be worth potential victory points to us at the end of the game, and if we have completed full rows, then we could also potentially get bonuses like this splitter here. Now, another thing that you can gain over here are stars, and I'll talk about those in detail later on. Well, let's now see how the white player performs their trucking phase before we then take our own trucking phase. After considering their options, they would like to add a truck, and they are going to use this card. That's going to use both of the action points they have available, and that means they will take this truck, which has uh, five empty spots on it, and they are not going to send it to our shipping area. They're going to send it to their own. So this truck is going to enter over here, and as you can see, they now have a connected active path going all the way to an empty spot on their truck. And after every single trucking action, you check to see if any truck has to load or unload goods. So that means the white player is also going to be shipping a red good going through the pipe like this onto that location on their truck. And once again, they are not going to be allowed to place a red good on either of these locations because you cannot have two goods of the same color adjacent on a truck. Well, that's finished up their trucking phase which means we can go, and I think we want to spend both of these one action point cards to add these trucks down. Again, this can go onto either player's shipping area, but I think we want to add them to our own. And let's start by playing this size two truck. So we can take one of those, and we can push this into our shipping area. And as you can see, after doing that, we have this active connection for the red pipe going into an empty spot on a truck. So that means we can immediately ship one red good, which means we can place this right over there. And now we just need to make sure to ship two blue goods before the game is over to be able to win the game. Now, as you can see, there are these numbers along the top. And that means if the game was to end and we had cleared both of these so that we were able to win the game, that uh, each of these tokens is worth that number of victory points. So if the game ended like this, we would get two points for blue and then eight points for red because that's the spot we got to with red. Uh, down below, there are some extra bonuses for clearing the column. If you have cleared all of these up to this point, you get two bonus points. And if you have somehow shipped every single one of your resources, you would get a bonus eight points on top of the 10 points you'd get for that up there. Now, at this point, we have one action point left that we can use. And I think let's use it to add this truck to our shipping area. That is this truck here. And as you can see, when we push it in, a couple things are going to happen. The first is we once again have an active connection going to an empty spot on a truck. So we can once again ship a red good. So this has been a very good trucking phase for us. This red good will go all the way over there. And after that, you'll notice that there are no more empty spots on this truck here. Now, as soon as every single possible loading spot on a truck is full, you will gain the bonus that is printed on the cab of that truck. So for this truck here that we just pushed out, you'll notice it does have these blocked spots. So if we had filled this spot in, we would have gained the benefit, but that is not the case for us. Now, this benefit specifically says we will gain a conveyor tile. So we can grab a random one out of the bag, and that is this one here. And we'll just put that directly into our storage. After that, the next thing we can notice is that at least one part of a truck has left our shipping area, which means the entire truck is going to leave our warehouse and head over to our opponent's receiving area. So this truck is over here, and now if our opponent is able to run a red line of pipe to one of their machine ports to a spot that has one of these goods, they could then receive that and potentially get a decent amount of victory points for it. So we have gained things for these products, and our opponent now has an option to gain even more from them if they are able to to make that happen. We could of course keep sending trucks if we want to, to then try to push this over so that it leaves their area before they can actually cash out for those things. That's just one of the many things that we are thinking about as we are playing the game. 
Now, at this point, we have finished our trucking phase because we have used two AP worth of playing cards for our option, and that means the round is coming to an end. Well, the trucking phase is over, and I think it's now time for us to discuss what the game end triggers are. Now, we have to check for the game end after every phase of the game, so each of the construction and trucking phases, and if any of these four conditions are met, the game will come to an end. The first of these conditions are if this draw bag of tiles is empty, and the second is if this deck of truck cards has been depleted. The third trigger has to do with a number of goods shipped on one of the player boards. As you can see, it says shipping nine cargo. So that means if at the end of a phase, any player has shipped nine or more of their cargo, then that will trigger the end of the game. And the fourth and final trigger will happen at the end of the phase where any player has at least one star. Now there are three ways to gain stars, and two of those three involve the receiving area of the board. As you can see at the top, we have some victory points and then a star. And if you have four of a specific type of received good, then you don't get these victory points at all. You instead gain the star. So you could get two stars by having received four of each of these types of goods. And the third and final way you can gain a star is by having a maximum of 10 active connections at some point in the game. Once the game end has been triggered, we will then check to see if any players win. Now, as I mentioned before, you must have shipped at least two red and two blue resources. So if you have not done that, then you are not able to win and your opponent automatically wins as long as they have met that threshold. If you have not, then the game technically ends in a draw. Now, if both players have reached this threshold to potentially win, you then check to see who has the most stars. If one player has more stars than the other, they just automatically win. But if there is a tie between the players having stars, then you check victory points. This could mean that neither player has any stars and you have a tie at zero. Now, you gain victory points for being at the 7th, 8th, and ninth spot on this track. You also gain victory points for having shipped and received these goods, the number being associated with the rightmost received good and the rightmost shipped good on your board of that color type. You can gain extra victory points by having shipped a complete fifth and sixth column of these goods over here. And finally, players will gain one point for every extra construction token, trucking token, or splitter they have in front of them. The player who has the most points when you add all of that up will be the winner. If there's a tie at that point, then the player who is farthest down on this track or on top of the other player on this track will break the tie in their favor. Now, at this point, none of those endgame triggers have happened, so we can continue on with the game with a construction phase with the white player technically going first, so I guess let's see what they do before we actually make our decisions. They've decided to start by drawing a tile from the bag for one action. For their second action, they will draw another tile. And then they're going to draw yet again for their third action. Uh, that is going to be it for their turns. They have to store all of these tiles. And they'll put them down like this. We are next. And we do have one tile that we could place. And this is, well, not actually doing that much for us. As you can see, we could try to extend this blue line. But that essentially goes in the wrong direction. So I think let's leave this on our board and start by drawing a tile out of the bag. And this is the one that we got. Now, we do know that hypothetically there is going to be a red good heading our way at some point. Our opponent has loaded one up on their truck, but we're not sure how quickly that will arrive. We could use this to potentially try to work our way over to pick something up, or we could try to use this to get another red connection going over to the left. Honestly, I'm not seeing an amazing spot for this right now, so let's spend another action drawing a tile. <laughs> and that is similar, but uh, an inverted pattern of this one here. You know, let's just have this be a digging turn so we can spend our third action drawing another tile. And we got lots of those swoopy ones this turn. We now have to store all of this stuff, and I think we will put them like that. Well, the construction phase is over and no end game triggers have happened, so we can move into the trucking phase with the white player going first. In this case, they've decided they are going to spend one AP in order to add that specific truck into their shipping area, and they don't have any other cards, so they're only going to use one AP. Now, they could send this into our area, but they want this on their shipping side, and as soon as they push that down, we can see they are going to be able to ship another red good, placing that onto this spot of their truck. This card is discarded, and that is going to finish their trucking phase, which means we can go, and we don't currently have any trucking cards. Remember, our options are play a trucking card to put a truck out, 
play a trucking card to gain uh, the conveyor tokens, or we could spend conveyor tokens to gain a trucking card. I think let's go ahead and do that. Honestly, neither of these two tiles are doing much for me, so I think let's get rid of these, and they are removed from the game entirely, not put back in the bag. After doing that, we can gain a single truck card from the deck, and that has finished up our trucking phase. Uh, no one has reached an end game trigger, so that means we can move into the next round with a construction phase, with the white player going first. For their first construction action, they are going to add this tile like that. Now that does break their red active connection, so technically they have zero active connections at this moment. And then after that, they are going to place this tile down, and they want that to go over here. Uh, actually, no, like this, it appears they are trying to work their way over here to try and receive some of these red goods on that truck. They do, at this point, have one more construction action if they want to use it, and they have decided to place this tile like that. Now, by doing this, they have now made a blue connection that's going to run all the way through there. They still don't have that active red connection happening for them anymore, though, unfortunately for them. Since they currently have one active connection, they are not going to move themselves up on this track because they are currently at the one spot. And again, this tracks the maximum number of active connections that they've had at any point in the game. Actually, hold on a second. The white player just realized that they could place this tile over there instead of on that spot. This does mean they do not have that blue active connection, but they do have a red active connection over here. Their active connection maximum is still at one, but that does mean they have a red line going all the way to this red good, so that means they will receive this good, and I think that's a better turn for them. Uh, yeah, sorry for changing my mind there, but this is what they're definitely going to go with. Well, white is done with their construction phase, which means we can go, and one thing I'd love to do is get a blue active connection going, so I think let's start by drawing a tile from the bag, and that does have some blue on it, it does get us in the right direction, although it would not quite get us to the very end at this point. So let's not place this just yet, and I think let's draw another tile. And that's not doing a lot for me, so let's go ahead and draw one more tile from the bag for our third construction action. Ooh, that one could potentially be good for us in the future, but we don't have any more actions right now. So let's go ahead and stack this stuff into our storage. I think we are going to place this one here, We'll place that one there and this one onto that spot. I'm thinking we're probably going to get rid of these two tiles in our trucking phase to draw another card. Speaking of the trucking phase, we can now move into it, and the white player gets to go first. Now before any actions are taken, loading and unloading has to happen, and as you can see, they do have a red good on their receiving side connected to a red active connection to one of their machine ports. So they have received this from the truck that we sent out, and that will now be placed into the receiving area. As you can see, by covering that up, they are going to gain a construction token that they could spend in a future construction phase to gain up to two more construction actions, or to place a splitter that they might have in front of them. Now, talking about these splitters, I think it's time to discuss how we gain them. One way is by receiving two full columns of these goods, so you need to have two red and two blue. That would gain you a splitter of a color of your choice that's available. There are two of these red splitters and two of these blue splitters. Once again, the only way to play a splitter token that you already have is by getting rid of a construction token, and you place this out instead of gaining extra construction actions. If you don't have any of these, then you cannot place these out. Now, these can be quite good, of course, because when you put them down, they are going to split the uh, stream of these pipes. Putting it onto a spot like that, for example, would make an active connection, and you could be more efficient with some of your paths. I don't think that would be the best option for the white player if they did that, but I think you should be able to see the point there. In addition to gaining splitters from receiving goods, you can also gain them by completing trucks that show that splitter icon on the cab of the truck. Now, obviously, the white player does not have any of these, but one thing they do have is four victory points. Remember, each of these received goods is worth the number of points equal to the number above that specific column, and you only care about these victory points if you have the same amount of stars as your opponent. This does mean if they receive three more red goods, they will gain a star, and gaining even one star is one of the endgame triggers, and we actually have two more red goods heading their way, so this is something for us to consider. If we keep shipping red goods, that's going to give us victory points, but it will also give our opponent the opportunity to get a bunch of points and potentially stars from those goods when they enter their warehouse.
After all shipping and receiving has happened, players can take their turns, and the white player is actually going to pass for this shipping action. As you can see, they only have one tile, so they cannot get rid of two to get a trucking card, and since they have no trucking cards, they cannot spend cards to place trucks down or to gain more tiles. So they are simply doing nothing for this trucking phase, which means it now comes to us, and we could play this truck out, but I don't know if that's going to be great for us in this moment. I think instead, let's just get rid of these two tiles. They're not doing a lot for our plans in our factory, and that will let us draw another trucking card. Ooh, and that's a big one. All right, the trucking phase is over, and the game is not done, so we can move into the next round, and the white player can do their construction. White has decided to start by drawing a tile from the bag for one of their construction actions, and then for their second, they're going to draw another tile. After that, they're going to draw another tile for their third and final construction action without using one of their construction tokens. And then after that, they've decided they are going to use this to gain two more construction actions. With the first of these two extra construction actions, they want to place this tile like that. And now they have indeed added an active connection. At the moment, they actually have two active connections, which means they have to move their maximum connection token up to the two spot on the track. At this point, they have one action left, and they are just going to draw another tile, and now they have to store all of these. In this case, they have decided to put that tile there, and these other two tiles will go into that storage spot. After that, we can construct, and I think we want to try and get a blue line going. Let's start by placing this here, which means we don't quite have that active connection going just yet, and then we can place this one like that. As you can see, that is going to maintain our red connection, and we have now added a blue line in. So we have increased the maximum number of active connections we've had in this game. That has gone up to two, so that means we will go here, and now we get to go before the white player when it comes to each of the phases, at least until this track changes once again. Now we do have one construction action left, and I figure let's draw a tile, and then we don't have any construction tokens to spend, so we can just place this into our storage. Construction is done, and the game has not come to an end, so now we can move it into the trucking phase, and we get to go first. Actually, technically, before we go, all of the trucks potentially ship or receive, and the white player does need to ship right now. As you can see, this blue connection meets up with an empty spot on the truck that's not adjacent to another blue token, so that means they are going to ship this over here. And as you can see, there is an icon over there, which is a column bonus once you've cleared that full column. Now this lets them gain a trucking token, and I'll describe the details of what you could do with these tokens once we reach the white player's trucking phase this round. So let's take our trucking phase, and I think let's just go ahead and add this truck to our own shipping side. That means we are going to drive this into our shipping dock. That is not going to send any trucks away just yet. As you can see, this one has not left our warehouse. And then after doing that truck action, we are going to ship our first blue good onto that location. Now that filled this truck up. There was only one spot on there. So we immediately gained the bonus of that truck, which means we can take a random tile out of the bag. And that is what we get. And I figure we will place this one on top of that tile in our storage. Next up, we are going to gain our own trucking token, and actually, I said I'd talk about it on the white player's turn, but let's talk about what these do now, because we could potentially use this immediately. Just like the construction tokens, we can use up to one of these trucking tokens per trucking phase, and when we use this, we will then draw a new trucking card from the deck. After doing that, we will gain two more action points to use in this round, and we must use at least one of those, and I think let's go for it. So let's spend this trucking token to draw this card, and now we have to spend one or two action points, which means we're going to play one of these two cards to add a truck into our warehouse. Now technically we can actually add the truck to our opponent's shipping line if we want to stop them from dawdling and actually move these trucks down and also potentially put a truck in here that won't work out very well for how their active lines are going. Now at the moment we have not built any receiving infrastructure just yet so I think let's just use this card and that is going to let us add this to a shipping side and we're going to ship it onto our side. So that means we're going to push these forward. And as you can see, this active red line is going to put our fourth red good onto that truck. So we've been very good at shipping red goods so far in this game. Now, after we did that, we can look up here and see that this pushed these trucks along to the receiving area. And unfortunately, that did line up 
this token for our opponent to take it. And maybe that is not something that we should have let happen, but it seems likely the red player would have picked that up anyway, so I think we are just going to roll with this. Now that means that they are going to immediately receive that, and as you can see, when they place this down, they are going to gain another trucking token. So they actually have two of these, but remember, you can only spend at most one of them per trucking phase. Technically, that also increased their victory points by three, going from four to seven. But over here, you can see we went from four to eight points on that red line. So we actually got four points, which is more than the three our opponent just received. Well, our trucking phase is done, so the white player can go. And before they take this phase, you'll notice they have two of these trucking tokens. Now I did say you can spend at most one of these to perform that trucking token action. But another thing that you can do is as a free action, you can get rid of two trucking tokens, putting them back into the supply in order to take a splitter that is available. Another thing that players can do, which I haven't talked about just yet, is you can discard two construction tokens to take one of these trucks. So technically you could spend four construction tokens in order to take a splitter if you wanted to. Now, I don't think the white player wants a splitter that badly right now. They would definitely prefer to have these trucking tokens, considering currently they don't have any truck cards in their hand. Well, they're going to start by taking their trucking action, and they are going to remove both of these tiles in order to draw a trucking card. And then after that, they are going to spend a trucking token to draw a trucking card, and then they must spend at least one action point playing a trucking card to put a truck into a shipping dock. On that note, they do need to take a look at these cards. And they have decided they are going to play this card to put that truck into their own shipping area. So that is going to enter here, which is going to push these trucks along. And as you can see, that means that this truck is lined up with their active blue connection. So they can ship this blue good along that line. And as you can see, the white player is now eligible to win the game because they have shipped a minimum of two red and two blue goods. Now that has also completed this truck right here, so as a bonus they are going to gain a random token because that is the icon printed on the cab of that truck. Now they're going to place this right over here, and then finally we can see this large truck has gone beyond their warehouse. So that is going to move over here, and now it's time for us to start considering trying to receive some of these goods. There are three on this specific truck, although two of them right now are in the area that we cannot receive from. If we set up some infrastructure to try and receive these, we might send trucks to our opponent's shipping area to push this truck along to match up with the pipes that we have laid. Obviously that hasn't happened just yet, it's just something we want to consider for the next construction phase. Speaking of that, we can see that the trucking phase is over and the game has not come to an end, so let's now take our construction phase because we are once again the starting player. So let's focus over here and we would love to get a red pipe going onto the fore section of our receiving area to grab this, but I'm not sure if we have the best tiles for that. We can see underneath that tile is there, uh, but that one does not match up super well with trying to reach onto that area. And of course, this is at the bottom of that stack. So we have to play this one before we can play that one there. Of course, we could play these out slowly, doing that and then that, but even so, this would not get us to that third spot. And at the moment, we don't have any construction tokens to spend in order to get more actions in this specific round. Shoot, I don't remember which order those went down on, but uh, we'll go with this. Well, since we don't have a great setup with these stored tiles, let's go ahead and grab another one. And that one, hmm, I guess it will kind of help us out with this plan to go slowly putting three of these things down. But uh, we only have two more construction actions right now, and it's possible this truck might move before we actually get to go again. And yeah, I think let's just go ahead and continue to grab more tiles. So let's take this one out of the bag, and we have found that which is blue. Blue is certainly something we want to continue working on, but I was hoping to see a long red. So let's just keep on digging for our third construction action. And that one did give us a great red. We could put that there and then put something like that there in order to pick that up. Of course, that is something we are going to have to consider doing later on because we have now used all of our construction actions. So let's add these onto the stacks. And I think we will add this one here, then this one, and that one will go on top. Actually, let's do these in a different order so that we can potentially place both of these on our next construction phase like that. White can now take their construction action and they're gonna start by drawing a tile. And they really like the look of that one right there. After that, they are going to place this tile and they don't actually care about what it's doing. 
They just want a construction token. So they want to cover up one of these specific spots. And they figure they will go like that. That's not really doing much for them, but it does give them a construction token. And now they have one main action left, but they are going to spend this to get two more, which means they can do three more actions. With one of these, they're going to place this tile like that. With the second, they are going to place this tile like that. And then with their final action, they are going to place this one like that. Now, as you can see, these are not lining up specifically with new trucks, but they do indeed have one, two, three active connections, which means they once again take the lead. And since they are the first person to the spot, they gain one construction token. And once we get to that spot, we will get two construction tokens, which is definitely a nice thing to have, although we are currently behind. The construction phase is done and the game is not over. So now the white player can take their trucking phase. And for their trucking action, they are going to discard this card to gain three random tiles from the back. After that, they have to put these into their storage. And then they've decided to spend their trucking token. So that is going to have them draw a card. And then they must spend at least one action point on adding a truck. So they can just flip this over. And that is a size five truck. Specifically, that is this one here. And they must add this to a shipping dock. And they think adding it to their own is going to be just fine. So they are going to add it over here, which is going to slide all of these trucks down. And then that is going to let them ship their third blue resource. In addition to that, this truck is going to leave their warehouse and push this other one down. And so now there are a bunch of resources over here, which we could potentially try to grab. We just don't have much infrastructure built yet to actually take them. And hopefully we can make that happen before our opponent pushes this beyond our warehouse and we lose access to them. Well, the white player is done with their trucking phase, which means it's now time for us to go. I think we don't really care about these two tiles here, so let's get rid of them. And that lets us draw a new card. And then we don't have any trucking tokens to spend, so that's going to finish out our turn. The game isn't over, so we can move into the next round with a construction phase. And the white player gets to do this first. For white's first construction action, they are going to draw a random tile. And for their second action, they're going to draw another one. For their third action, they want to add this tile like that. And then they are going to discard this to gain two more construction actions. With one of these, they're going to dig into the bag again to draw another tile. And then for their last action, they're going to put this down like that, which is going to get them one more construction token that they cannot use because they've already used one on this turn. So they have to add this stuff to their storage and they will do it like this. And now it's time for our construction phase. I think let's just go ahead and try to pick up this good right here. And we can do that by placing this out for one action. And that one will go down for two. Now that has increased our number of active lines to three. Which means we can go there. Which is going to make us the starting player for the next phase of the game. And since we are the second player to get to that spot, we will gain two construction tokens. Well, we have one more action plus potentially two more if we get rid of one of these tokens. And I think we should place this, well, ah, shoot. I was hoping it would connect like that, but I misread that tile. That being said, the one underneath is the one that I'd like to put there. So we should probably put this one down as well. Actually, this works out great. We can add this right there. And that was our third action. We can then discard this to get two more actions and then place this like that. And this works out just perfectly, actually. So we now have one, two, three, four active lines. So that will push us forward on this track one more time. And every time a player reaches this spot, they draw a truck card. So let's draw this and add it to our hand. Well, we have one action left and no tiles. So let's just spend that drawing one more tile, which we will add directly into our storage. Well, we can now move on to the trucking phase, and we do have some receiving to do before we move on with players taking their turns. I don't think the white player has anything to do up there, but over here, we are going to receive a red good, and we will also receive this blue good. When we look at our receiving area, that red good is going to get us a construction token, and the blue good will also get us a construction token. Now we have just increased our score by eight because this is four plus four. And as you can see, if we do another one of those full columns, we will get a splitter. Also receiving anything else is going to get us trucking tokens, which are also great things to have. All right, let's now perform the trucking phase and we get to go first. 
We have three cards over here. We could discard this one to get three more tiles, which might be a good idea, considering for the next few turns I'm planning on doing five construction actions instead of three. Now I have to admit that part of me wants to send a truck to our opponent's shipping area to then push these trucks down, because that truck is perfectly sized to line this blue good up with our blue receiving. The problem with that is this truck is also well positioned to receive these goods over here, and I fear that our opponent will gain more from that than we would for receiving that blue resource into our warehouse. So I think instead, let's send some trucks over here to try and ship some more of our own things. Let's start with this one. That's going to take one of our two available AP, and that does mean we are not going to be discarding this for uh, the conveyor tiles, but I think I'm okay with that. Now, this means we are going to add that truck down, and instead of going over here, which would do the thing I just showed you, we'll send it over there onto our own shipping. Now, that is going to push all of this down. That's also going to shift these up, and that truck has left the warehouse area for our opponent, so it is now removed from the game. Now, I suppose that did set our opponent up to be able to receive that, which isn't great, but we've also set ourselves up to be able to deliver a blue, and we must deliver another blue to even be eligible to win the game, and I think I'd like to deliver quite a few blue, so getting one of these in, I think, is probably going to be worth it. As you can see, shipping to our own area or our opponent would help our opponent out. They are pretty well situated, and I think this is going to be the better alternative. Now, after we play every truck card, we have to check for shipping and receiving. Uh, over here, we can see that we are indeed going to ship this blue out, and there is no immediate benefit from that. But if we ship another blue, we will get a trucking token, which would be nice. And then, of course, up here, our opponent is going to receive this red which is going to increase their red points from 7 to 9, so that gained them 2 points. And that also lets them take one of these splitters, which is a pretty powerful tile. After considering their options, they are going to take a blue splitter, and it is worth noting that they are one received red good away from getting a star, and the player with the most stars wins the game. Also, if any player has at least one star, that would be an end game trigger, and they are starting to get quite close to that. Well, at this point, we could spend one more AP to send this truck out, but if we sent it to our opponent's shipping area, it would be too disruptive, and it would actually force us to not pick up this blue, which is something I really do want to do. And likewise, over here, if we sent this truck out, that would pull in like this, and it wouldn't line up with any of these lines, and it wouldn't really help us out in any way. So I think let's just hold on to this for now, and we could potentially discard it for three tiles on a future turn. And with all that being said, I think we are done with our trucking action. Up here, the white player does not have any trucking tokens or trucking cards, and they are going to spend their trucking action getting rid of these two tiles to draw one card from the top of the deck. All right, that's finished up the trucking phase. And the game isn't over, so now we can move into a construction phase where we get to go first. At the moment, we do have three of these tokens, and I suppose we could have spent two of these on our last trucking phase to draw a trucking token and then use it, but I think holding on to these to spend them as construction actions is probably better right now. For our first action, I think let's draw a tile, and then let's draw another one for our second action. Now these, I think, are going to help us out, so let's spend our third action placing tiles, and we are going to put this one like that. Now this is a tippy spot, so we have to make sure to add a scaffolding underneath so that those even up. And what we want to do is have a blue line going like this. That won't increase the number of lines that we have, but it will let us deliver a blue good onto that truck, which would complete it. And that does seem good. Now we've used all three of our construction actions, but we can get rid of one of these to gain two more. And with that in mind, let's use this tile here, and we can place it like this so that both of these lines are once again back online. We have to use a scaffolding tile because this is a tippy spot, and as you can see, we haven't increased our overall uh, number of active lines, so we don't have to adjust this, but now we can deliver a blue good onto that truck. So that worked out pretty well for us. And we actually have one more action, so let's go ahead and draw a tile from the bag, and then add that into our storage. Actually, considering these are so similar, we're going to stack them like this. In fact, yeah, those are identical tiles. So, we are done with our construction, which means the white player can go, and they are going to start by drawing one tile for an action. For their second action, they've decided to place this like that. 
and their third action will place that one like that on the board. Actually, they're going to spin this around and do this. Now, as you can see, they haven't actually added a new line in yet, but now they are going to spend their construction token to place this splitter down instead of gaining two more actions. So they can place this onto the board and they'll put it right here. And by doing that, you can see they now have one, two, three, four active connections. This means they will move forward on the track, so they are now the first player, and they do get to draw a truck card as a bonus for reaching that spot. The construction phase is over, and the game has not come to an end, so now we can do the trucking phase, and it appears we have two different shippings that will happen immediately. For us, we are going to ship a blue good onto that truck there. That reward for completing the truck is going to get us a random tile that we can then add onto our board, and then we can look over here and see that we cleared this column which means we will gain a trucking token as a bonus. Then up here, we can see the white player was able to also deliver a blue. That's going to go through this splitter and then follow that pipe along to this position on that truck. That did not complete the truck, so they do not gain the bonus of a construction token, and that also did not give them a new column, so no other bonuses for them. Well, we can now take our trucking phase actions, and the white player gets to go first. After considering their options, they want to play this truck card to then add that truck to a shipping lane. That is one of the smallest trucks, as you can see, and it's going to use one action point, and they are going to send it onto their own shipping line, because as you can see, that is going to push the trucks along so that they will be able to load a blue as well as a red onto that truck there, which is something that they are quite interested in doing. Down here, we can see that is also going to send this truck along, and then that truck is going to leave our warehouse, and we were not able to capture and receive this red good. Now we can see over here that we are going to receive this blue good, and that is going to go onto that spot on our board, which will get us our second trucking token. Now remember, we could discard both of these to pick up a splitter if we wanted to, um, but we'll just have to see if it makes sense for us to spend these for truck cards or not on this turn. It's also worth noting each of these tokens is worth one point at the end of the game. At the same time we were receiving, our opponent was shipping. They are going to send this blue along there, and then that red is going to follow this path. Remember, the goods cannot be next to another good of that color, but you can have a buffer of the other good in between, just like this. Now, by doing that, they have cleared a new shipping column, and the bonus for that column is going to get them a trucking token. It's also worth noting that the white player has shipped eight goods, and remember, one of the endgame triggers is any player shipping nine or more goods, so we are certainly approaching the end of the game at this point. With that in mind, the white player can continue on with their trucking turn. They've just used one AP so far, and they've decided not to play this card, but they are going to play this trucking token in order to draw a new card, and then immediately they must spend one AP playing a new truck out onto the board. After considering the options, they are going to play this truck, and they've decided to send it to their own shipping area. Now, they were hoping to find some sort of big play, sending some decent-sized trucks over here for a couple of AP in order to send these trucks down, because as you can see, if they got it to this point, then that would have exactly matched up with receiving this red, and that would have been their fourth received red, which would have given them a star. That would have initiated the end of the game, and a player who has more stars than the other player would just win without even counting up any victory points. In order to do that, however, they would have had to add seven truck worth of area to our shipping spot, and it looks like they did not get that between the two cards they have available to them. So that means these trucks are still back over here. They were not able to get access to that star, but they are going to try to get more victory points. And they're going to do that by sending this truck to their own shipping area. You can see that when this slides forward, that's not actually going to send this truck out, but it will line that truck up with this blue active connection, so that means they are going to ship this blue good. Now that is their last blue good, as you can see, and that was their ninth shipped good. So that means this is going to be the final phase of the game, because a player has reached one of the four end game triggers, in this case having shipped at least nine cargo. Now, they would have loved to also put a red on that spot there, but as you can see, this is not an active connection. If they had a red splitter on this location, that would have been amazing for them. But up to this point in the game, they only got one splitter, and it's the blue one they already put down. Now, that did fill this truck, so they are going to gain a bonus tile, although these are not actually worth anything at the end of the game. Now, at this point, they do have AP left, but they don't think this truck is really going to help them out. It could actually potentially help us out more than them, so they've decided they don't want to spend it. 
So we can now take our chucking action, and we know that this is going to be the final phase of the game because one of the end game triggers have happened. Now, I don't think we have a way to get to a star. We would need to receive two more blue or three red, which is not going to happen, I don't think. And we also would need to get up to 10 connections, and we're currently at four. So this game, I think, is going to be all about having the most victory points, considering we are going to tie with our opponents at zero stars. So we want to try and get as many points as we can in this trucking phase. And we do have a trucking token and a couple of cards. So hopefully we can gain some points by adding trucks to the board. Now we know we are going to spend one of these, so I think let's just do it right away. We can draw this card and then consider that. And we know that we must spend at least one AP of the two extra we just got. We actually have four AP to use on this turn now. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we can use these trucks to receive any of these goods. Maybe there is a way, but I'm not seeing it happen. If these goods were reversed, we could potentially have picked up both of them, but that is not the case. So instead, we might want to focus more on trying to ship some goods. And I figure let's start by using this truck here. That will let us add this truck to one of the shipping lines. And if we add it to this one, then that will slide these over and that is going to line this spot up with blue so we can ship this blue good, which did just gain us four more victory points. In addition to that, we completed this truck, which gains us a bonus tile, which again is not going to be worth anything to us at the end of the game. Now we do have to push these trucks down and fortunately that did not line up with any of our opponents receiving lines on their board. Well, we have two more AP to spend, and I think, why not, let's send one of these massive size 6 trucks down to our opponent's shipping area. I don't think it's going to help them, or us, but let's just see what happens. So that means we could send this truck going down like that, and as you can see, this does line up with one of their open blue lines. But they don't have any more blue goods to ship, so that doesn't actually do anything for them. Next up, over here, all of these trucks are going to move out, and yep, it's just like I thought it was. These trucks are going to go away, and this blue is lined up with our red receiving, and this red is lined up with our blue receiving. So we don't pick up either of these, we were just one away from getting a bunch more points, but that's just not how these truck sizes worked out for us in our receiving area. So by adding that truck, it didn't help anybody, but it was certainly fun pushing them around. Now that has brought our trucking phase to an end, and at this moment we know the game is over because one of the four triggers has been hit. Again, that is this draw deck being fully out, and as you can see there weren't that many cards left. The second was going through this entire bag, and there were quite a few tiles there. The third was any player reaching a star, which our opponent was very close to, but no one did. And the last one was anybody shipping at least nine goods. We ended up shipping eight, and our opponent did ship nine. So the game is over, and now we have to figure out who wins the game. First things first, we have to make sure each player is eligible to win the game. In order to be eligible, you must have shipped at least two blue and two red goods, and it looks like both of us did that, so we both have the option of winning. Then, if the other player had been eligible, they would just win the game immediately. The next thing to check are stars. Those come from reaching the end of this track, or by receiving four blue or red goods, and none of us hit any of those stars, so we both have zero, and whenever there is a tie for having the most stars, then we check our victory points. Now let's go ahead and score ourselves up first. We can see that we did not get to the 7, 8, or 9 spots. We don't get points for this board. And the rest of the points that we get come from our area. Each of these tokens are worth 1 point, so that is 3. Then we get 8 points for our blue shipped goods, and 8 more points for our red. We would have gained an extra 2 bonus goods if we'd cleared that column, but it doesn't look like that happened here. So we currently have 8 plus 8 plus 3, or 19 points. And then over here, we get 7 points for the blue, and then 4 more points for the red. So, all told, we have 30 points. And now we can count up the points for our opponent. They don't have any remaining tokens over here, and they're going to get 4 points for their red, and 10 points for their shipped blue. And then over here, they get 9 points for their received red, and no points because they... And no points for blue since they did not receive any of those. So, all told, they only have 23 points. And that means we win the game with our 30 victory points. Remember, we only counted up the points because we tied for having the most stars, and in this case, that was zero stars. Now, this is going to bring our full playthrough to an end, and it's also going to bring the tutorial to a close. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to play Curious Cargo. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.